well, it's Friday. Doing all this, uh, doing these videos, um, it sort of does change my schedule up a little bit. I've been fighting and fighting and fighting with an Omega. <clears throat> it's, it's crazy. You have one little problem, one little teeny tiny, tiny little problem, and it eats hours. It ate most of today trying to get this, this old Omega with the, because they have, many of these old watch companies have no problem whatsoever doing something that is unique. And so the lower dia shock setting for this particular vintage Omega is something that was only used on like 12 different models and they're long discontinued. And, um, boy, I'm just having fun hunting one down. I tried for hours and hours and hours and hours to, uh, put together a make do something that would, that should to modify a closely related part to make it work. Can't do it. Impossible. Okay. So last week, as everybody will remember, I saw a big ass hawk out there, except it wasn't a hawk. It was a crow. Um, I don't know, just the way it was standing, it just kind of looked like a hawk, not a crow. But I, I didn't see the giant beak. Everybody else did. Uh, Sabrina was like, I don't... After I made the video, she's like, when you came huffing back in and said that you saw a hawk, I looked at it, I was like, that's a crow. But I didn't say anything. So anyway, it was in fact a crow. But I do like crows. Crows are very, very intelligent. I want to do that thing where if you... If you make friends with crows and like give them snacks and stuff like that, they start to bring you shiny things that they find. Okay. Um, Intizamable. Okay, this this is a question about the uh, the Redune 6105-8000 homage, homage, watch. Why does the original 6105-8000 appear to have mirrored double minute Markers. I have yet to see a homage that gets this effect right. Is it the way Seiko polished the edge of the hard lux? Well, it's actually um, the way that Redune did the crystals is is the modern way, which is that you have a crystal forced into a um, forced into a nylon flat gasket. It's it's the way even most Seikos are done these days. The old days, Seiko original, so you, okay, so the modern crystal, the Redune crystal, the sides of it are flat like this, and it just gets, and it just gets pushed into the case, and it's held in place by this flat nylon ring. Seiko, those crystals are pushed into an L gasket, and then there's a snap ring that's snapped on top of it, and the sides of the crystals are actually quite thin. They're not these big flat slab things. They're, they come down with that bezel, with that bevel on the outside. And so this portion of the crystal is actually fairly thin. Um, and you have a big bezel on it and, and it stands pretty high. And with the internal dome, you just get all these refractions. It just, it looks different. Unless they came up with a way to make that work, there's just no way to do it. Rock the Cat Box. That's a great name. Interesting story about the swords. Have you read Shogun? Oh yes, many times. Uh, and I saw the miniseries when it was on TV. But before that, I actually, I read, um, cause that, the, the Shogun thing, that person, uh, his name is Will something. He was a real person. And I actually, I read an account of his life in Japan that was written in, I think the twenties and it was nonfiction. Um, the only, it's been a long, 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 God, I almost remembered, I almost remembered the title. Something in the Navigator. I don't remember. Anyway, the only thing I remember from the book that I read, the one from the 20s, is that when um, Westerners landed in Japan, and he had been there for a good amount of time, he was standing at the dock um, trying to meet these fellow Europeans, and uh, he had forgotten how to speak English because he had been there for so long. But yeah, I always, that's probably, Shogun is probably where my interest in Edo period Japan was sort of reawakened. Solbrook. If you checked last week's mail call at the 26 minute mark, you look perhaps to be wearing the SKX 007. 
As to the other, I like stock watches, but I have a general compulsion to kanji day wheels and making all my 6309s hack. Other than the day wheel, when available, and some sympathetic reloom jobs, I have kept my 6139 and 6138 restores stock. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I get you. I, uh, functional upgrades, things that you can't see that don't change the aesthetics, I'm all about. Like you, Saul, I, um, I really prefer, when I do a 6309, um, I, I really want to make it like fully jeweled and hacking. That's like kind of the only two things I do. I'm, I'm on the fence about putting in the incorrect language D wheels, but I do like kanji English. But I don't know, it's just like, it's, it's fun to have a watch that you know that it looks dead stock, but it's a sleeper and that underneath the hood, everything is jeweled and it's, and it's upgraded where it can be. And I really do think 6309s really, they deserve to be, uh, they deserve to have hacking. I just like hacking. It's just one of those things. Joseph Stewart. Hi, Spencer, and possibly Sabrina. Uh, she's upstairs. I know that she looked at the question, so hello. I feel your pain. Here in Australia, our last summer, as you probably heard, was the worst on record. The bushfires were so bad that literally just about the whole country was on fire. Ash and smoke were literally in the air all summer, and I don't remember seeing the sun that much. We had a fire come to within less of a kilometer of our house. Scary stuff. My question for mail call. Have you had a chance to open up your SRP 6309 reissue yet? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, when I got it. Um... I wonder how different the 4R36 is to the 7S26 in build quality and aesthetics, apart from the obvious upgrades such as hacking and hand winding stay safe. Um, the 4R and the 6R are in many ways the same thing. They did change the keyless works a lot, um, where the keyless works were actually sort of moved to the inside rather than typically being on the calendar side. They're on the inside uh, of the plate on the same on the same side as like the train, and that is they chose to do that because of the way that the hacking lever works, because um, they wanted to have this lever go over to to um, to uh, to interact with the winding pinion, and so that's what they did. But the technology is just about the same. I don't think there's any problem with the four R three six or four R three seven or six R three whatever the heck it is um, in terms of quality of design. I think the quality of the design is 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 good. I where I've seen problems is with the hair springs, with the new system for um, fixing the hair spring to the to the arm. The old days it was done with a with a stud. Uh, the new days, it's and when the stud was actually like done, fixed to the hairspring, the old-fashioned way, which is it actually had a, a a teeny tiny like little wedgy pinny kind of thing. The new way to do it, that Seiko did it, is actually with a blob of glue. Um, I don't really think that that's so much the problem, and they probably did it for ease of manufacture. Um, but they really kind of cut corners where instead of having a stud that goes into the arm held in a very specific position and then screwed in place, they have this blob and it gets held in by these just sort of two fingers, like a wishbone, and it's just held there by like friction. Um, but I mean, the, 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 they're definitely, the 7S and the 4R and 6R are in many ways are just, they're just, they're cousins if not brothers. Oh, and his terms for the fire, because uh, I'm sorry, people, you may or may not be aware or care, but we are now dealing with the largest fire in Colorado history and the evacuation zones about a, maybe two kilometers, but a mile and a half yonder. Um, and there's, it, and that fire has been going on for months and months and months. It got real close to us and we have been dealing for now a couple of months with periodic orange days and ash falls. Um, but it had been getting better. Now there's a second fire. Actually, there's two new fires. There's a huge one on the western slide side of the Continental Divide 
and the fire managed with high winds to go over the Continental Divide to the east and into Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, and it is, in fact, it's approaching the southwestern side of the town of Estes Park. And the fire, the Cameron Peak Fire, which is right back here, is heading south. So Estes Park might get squished. And there's another fire that's just to the west of Longmont slash Boulder. But like yesterday, at 3.30, it was like night. It literally was like night. Like I, it, the, the windows were dark. You couldn't see anything. Everything was this deep, deep, deep color of a infected bruise. This yellow, brownish, reddish skies and ashing like crazy all over the place. I haven't had to get any of the cars washed in months because there's no point because we would just get more ash. So we're doing okay, but the fire people have said basically that until the winter kicks in and we start getting lots of snow that the fire they're just that's what's going to take to kill these fires john carides hey spencer another nice video though i miss sabrina too you and me brother i had a thought about the type c balance wondering if they have the hairspring attachment style like that as a way to adjust the hairspring and fabrication it's probably an ease of fabrication thing. Not the length of the hair spring, but how it's sitting. Yes. Like a time cost saving thing. Just thinking out loud. Well, I agree. Uh, I can't think of any other reason why they would have done that. And they could make it automatic, more automatic. And if you think about manufacturing parts, you have your hair spring in the old way, the old ways you have your, you have your tip of your end of your hair spring and it goes into I don't have anything over here that'll do for us. Stud. Basically, the hairspring goes through the stud, and then you have a like a little pin in it. You put that in, and it wedges it in place, um, and it holds it. And then the stud is permanently fixed to the end of the hairspring, and then that stud can drop into the adjusting arm and it has a teeny tiny screw and it screws it in position. It's a great system. Seiko watchmakers have used it for. Since the 1800s, they've used it forever and ever and ever. Um, and it's just one of the... Seiko used it with total success right up into, into the 2000s. And then they went to this new thing where it's... Instead of having that stud, you have this... I mean, you have a stud, but the whole thing is kind of glued in place. I don't know. It's funky. Hmm. Let's see where we are. I've seen that style of hairspring attached on a Breitling balance as well. Well, you know, if it works, it works. Um, I know that Rolex used that, that used a glued situation in the 3035 movements. Um, it wasn't for very long, and when they went to the 3135, they changed that and they went to uh, back to the old system, I believe. <sighs> Nicholas Miller. I've been toying with the idea of fitting an older hairspring setup to my Sarb 033 as it's been a battle getting its accuracy up to scratch. I think I'll go ahead and try it. What are your thoughts, Spencer? Well, here's the thing. You don't have to swap just the hairspring. You don't. The entire balance from a 7000 series, an earlier one, drops right in. So if you have a brand new balance, uh, I mean, the one thing is, is that if you want to change that stuff, rather than changing a hairspring, you're going to need to change the balance arm as well. So you might as well, honestly, the easiest way to do it is take everything. It's the balance cock, the, the balance uh, jewel, all that stuff, and just take it in. The rest of that movement, like the pallet fork and the escape wheel and all that other kind of stuff, is exactly the same. It's the same part number from up to the 7S26Cs, and related ones all the way back to the 60s. It's the same part. So you should be able to drop it in there. Now, you might also run into troubles because of what I've seen before with these later modern modern times Seikos is lubrication issues, but you wouldn't really know about that unless you ripped them apart. It's hard to say. But yeah, the balance will just drop right in. Don't I would not bother fooling around with the hairspring because then you'd have to change the balance arm and at that point you're just balance cock i'm sorry uh babak uh shakiba 
Thanks for answering my question, Spencer. I've been looking for a faded bezel to do the coconut oil experiment on, but I haven't been able to find one. Oh, you reminded me. When your question last week, I said, okay, well, what the heck? And I found a quite faded bezel for a 6139. This is what we're talking about, how the 6139 Pogue style indicator rings, the yellows will fade to white and the blacks will fade to gray. This individual was saying that he talked to somebody who said that if you soak them in coconut oil, that the color returns well. So after last week's call, I went and I found one and I asked upstairs and Sabrina had some coconut oil. So I put it in a little baggie with coconut oil. I haven't looked at it for a week. It's been sitting for a week. So I'm going to go okay. get it and look. So I am wearing my 6159 7000 birth year month watch. This is the second one I've owned. The first one is with a, a guy who has uh, some great watches, um, including a few nice ones for me. And he's excited to have it. I'm glad it's in a good home. That one is much prettier than this one. The other, that was my, my old one, but this one, you know, it's great. I bought this from the original owner and it has a little bit more wear, especially in the insert, but all of its history is known and it was never abused. And I'm just, I'm super happy with it. This is the other thing I'm super happy about. I found a source for vintage, new made, but vintage style 19 millimeter straps that I personally think look great on these. So they're kind of like a flat vent. The vent goes all the way around, but it's thin and it's super comfortable. This is like, I'm not quite sure what this is. Um, probably, possibly vinyl. I'm not sure. It has some flex, but it's a little stiff, but because it's so thin, it doesn't really bind up and it doesn't grip or stick at all. It's one of the things about rubber that really bugs me. So I'm going to have more on this. I'm trying to get a hold of the company. Um, I'd, I'd like to buy these in bulk and start really promoting these. I think they're super cool. Anyway, 6159, 7001. Okay, so here it is. Hang on a second. Let's put in a picture that I took of this before I um, before I did this. So let's do that. Okay, so you saw that it was pretty light. Well, I'd say it's improved. It's not perfect. It's not jet black, but it's improved. Let's see if I can see this here. There. you focus, focus. Any case, so you can see that it's darkened down. It's still gray, but it's better than it was. Now the question then, will it continue to improve? So you know what? I'm not even gonna take it out, I'm not gonna clean it, nothing. I'm going to put it back, uh, back where it was and let it sit there and we'll see how it looks next week. I was just gonna take a picture, but I guess I'll insert this. So yeah, it's definitely, it's improved. Uh, it smells like, um, it smells like surfing. It smells like surf wax to me, but it's definitely improved. You can see right up here, it hasn't darkened down. Yeah, it literally, it smells like, it smells like surf wax. Um, we'll put it back in the stuff and see how it goes. Now, the way oils generally work to make things clear is that they, they make a, they, they saturate in and they allow light to transfer through more. That's like you put bacon on, on paper towels and you can kind of see through them, right? Well, this might be doing the same thing. So my interest is going to be one next week, seeing if this improves more. When it improves to the point that we're maybe ready to look at it, I'll pull it out and clean it because, of course, the last thing you really want is rancid oil inside a watch, coconut oil or any other oil. So I don't know if the oil, if this is a permanent chemical change to the plastic itself or if it's simply the oil soaking in to the oxidized rough surface. 
We'll have to see. It's definitely improved. It's not 100% better, but it's better. So we'll look next week. Let's see now. Julie Hill. Hi, Julie. How are you? My lovely 1993 7002-7001 was a one-owner watch that never saw any water and was looked after. Dial, case, and movement in great condition. Luck of the draw. Well, not if you know what you're looking for. Some watches have been worked to death, others babied. Either way, we need to keep these Seiko pieces alive for future generations to enjoy. Boy, I tell you, it's true. I am, um, you know, all the different paths that these watches take. I, many years ago, many years ago, there was some dude from selling stuff from, oh God, Dominican Republic some resort in the Dominican Republic and he must have like cleared out the dive shop or somebody who did dive work with him uh, because he was selling off a batch of 6309 cushion case divers all kind of from the same era and they were just destroyed every single one of them um one of them looks like somebody had been driving a rented scooter and, and laid it out and just destroyed the face. But I got all of those in and I did my best and I think I got four watches out of him. And if I remember correctly, three of them I was able to return to service. So it's always good. More 6309s is better. Andrew Warner. Spencer, is that an original Star Trek badge on the shelf behind you? Um, No, but it is, it is one of the, I guess, it, I gather that it's one of the closest, most accurate reproductions made. I bought it many years ago. Anyway, it's neat. See, look, I'm wearing a red shirt, just, just like that. See, I should put Velcro on the back of this thing. See, and then I can, um, I gotta be careful though. I don't wanna get hit by a meteor or struck by lightning inside the house, seeing as I'm wearing red and my Star Trek badge. Jayco. Uh, oh, anyway, Andrew, man, I'd love to have some original uniform stuff. You know, there's a great clip. Um, Doug Drexler has this. Doug Drexler did a lot of the, the set building and model building and makeup stuff for Star Trek from uh, end of TNG through um, mo a lot of DS9 and stuff. But at a certain point, he and Michelle... Uh, Okuda and Michael Okuda, they got into the Paramount buildings where all of the stuff was held. This was before the giant Star Trek auction, like 10 years ago. And they got into this place underneath Paramount at where all the costumes were. And I mean, all the costumes. I thought they had thrown away everything. They had everything, like the spacesuits from the Tholian web, they're still sitting there. Like, and the one was labeled for Nimoy. Um, and they had all the stuff but anyway. Doug went and, uh, D Doug and, I'm sorry, Denise Okuda, um, went and, um, they put on TOS uniforms. They pulled them right off the shelf and slapped them on. Boy, wouldn't that have been great? Uh, Jayco. Crazy, I've been looking at these pandas lately. 6138, 8020 pandas. I'm not sure how they escaped my attention in the past. I think they may be the perfect watch. I love 70s chronos. Red tip second hand really pops. Yeah, it's that orange orange red. Day and date features, and the case looks more comfortable than the USO, UFO. Stay safe. Yeah, they are. The pandas are great watches. I mean, there's something, for me personally, aesthetically, I love the look at them, but I tend to not wear them. I think it's because the, the handset, to me, looks a little, looks a little slimmer. I would have, maybe thought to put <coughs> beefier hands on them. But yeah, that, that pain is gone. It's sold. It's going to Australia. But I keep trying to wrap my head around the other panda, the 6139-8020 black panda, or also known as the gold panda. This one is completely original, unrestored. Gold isn't really me. But I keep hoping that maybe someday if I clean and restore this, it would be something wearable. Nobody thinks about these at all. They're, they're, I don't know. I can't quite figure out what to do about it. 
Like, if I could figure out a strap color that worked, I would definitely wear them. Uh, because these, these do not, these are not prey to the same patina situation that the, the standard panda dials are. Their clear coat just goes all over the place. Yeah, but they're beautiful watches. Rick, the 6R15D movements only change the location of the case mounting holes. Uh, this is where you would put a case clamp in it, that would, that comes off the movement and secures the movement to the case. It's a dress watch thing for Seiko. The C version had holes for the old and new case designs. D version only fits the new cases, otherwise they are identical. So, good to know. Thank you for letting me know. The important parts of the movement, train, balance, barrel, etc., are the same as the C version, so theoretically would have the same problem. Good to know. I didn't know. People ask me and I'd be like, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Phil Lines. Very infor informative video on the Aliens watches. Do you by any chance have a link for the spare buttons? I can't seem to find them. Thank you. You can't find them uh, because they were made by one of our fellow collectors and enthusiasts, guy in Denver. He had them 3D printed uh, and they would still need to be fitted. He sent me some. I'll be damned if I know where they are. He sent them to me. No idea where they got put. I need to look for them. Mythoclast. Hmm. Somebody who denies myths. Interesting. I have a 7548-7000F salesman sample case that I'm putting a 7546 into. Where in the heck did you find a 7548 salesman sample? Wow. I would have loved to have seen that. I sw just swapped the day and date wheels to be for a four o'clock crown, but there seems to be an issue with the day change. The quick set day works changes works fine, but the change after midnight doesn't work completely. It will click over to the secondary language, then start to switch to the next day, but gets stuck between the two. My assumption is that the day jumper got slightly bent. Are there other things that could cause this? Um, well, yeah, uh, they ha has to be lubricated correctly. Um, have you serviced the movement? When they're dirty, when these 754Xs, when they're dirty, one of the first indicators is that day wheel starts to hang up. Um, the springs, the, that, the spring that, that keeps that where it's supposed to be is not very strong. And if you get any kind of gumminess or weirdness, they will hang up. In an extreme situation, Oh, maybe I should put this on here. In an extreme situation, though, if the center port for the if the if the hole for the center wheel uh, where the center wheel and canyon pinion meet, if that's super 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 duper worn, you get a thing where actually the that whole assembly, the hand stack, can tilt, and then it starts to bind up, and then the the date driving wheel and the intermediate date driving wheel get um get gummy and stop have you looked at those plastic gears for those two things have you looked to make sure that the teeth are as they should be and when you're assembling the movement you should have you should be looking at it with the crown in and literally just slowly turn it turn it to adjust the day and the date and it should it should never hesitate and drag it should go click 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 as you as you're doing it if it the other thing to look at is to look at the movement sideways and make sure that the the day wheel is flat, is actually flat. If it's, because they, they're the really thin aluminum and they, if they get warped, what will happen is you'll have one side come up or the other side comes down and it'll start dragging. So those are the things you want to check. Are the plastic intermediate date driving wheel and the date driving wheel, are the teeth good? Is there a ton of play in that hand stack? Um, is the movement clean? Have you lubricated where the, 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 a tiny bit where the, where the, that wheel, the stainless center star wheel of that day wheel, that's metal. If that's lubricated between that and the hour wheel, uh, and also a little bit on the, on the head of the spring as well, put the click back on, make sure that it's the flat side of the click is up, not the curved beveled side that goes down. And then again, 
just test the test the the setting. It should once you get it over that the the hump, it should go kunk, and it should click perfectly. If it doesn't, start digging in there as to why. Oh, I turned it over. Um, Mike E, you don't wear mods. What a crock! And his commas are in the wrong place. You don't wear mods. Don't know apostrophe. You don't wear mods. What a crock. If you wear a watch for work for a long time and parts become unavailable and need to be repaired, aftermarket parts are the only option. We might be talking apples and oranges here. When I think of a mod, I think of like taking a 7002 and getting rid of the old dial and putting in a, a, a hunter orange dial with a aftermarket hands and an aftermarket bezel insert and all this kind of stuff and making it kind of this custom mod hot rod thing. I don't wear those. Typically, I don't wear any mods. I wear watches that look stock, that look like they did as Seiko does, look like they did as Seiko designed them. What you're talking about is repair. Of course, I'm, if a watch part is not available from Seiko or any other watch company, and you, you have to, and there are good quality aftermarkets that have, that exist, then you don't have any choice but to use them. And it's not a mod. That's repair. Repair is a completely different thing. Mod is something you're doing because you want to change the look of something because you think it's neat. Um, or maybe how it runs, but I would really hesitate to put that into the mod category versus, you know, repairing a, you know, a bad cannon pinion. Um, and maybe the watch company doesn't make them anymore, but you find one from best fit. Who cares? It's a repair. So anyway, my suggestion, Mike E, is that when you make comments like this, I would, um, I would pull back from uh, any kind of um, personal denigration. It's just watches, man. It doesn't matter. We had a miscommunication. Randy Allen, behold, a new standard in watch reviews. Good work, guys. This was a comment Mr. Allen made on Sabrina's video about the, the Back to the Future watch that we got. I'm assuming you're being facetious, Randy. It was, I haven't rewatched the video, um, but it was, I mean, even by our low standards of pre-planning and doing work to get ready for these videos, we didn't do any planning at all. Uh, so it was even less professional than our already extremely low level of professionalism. I don't know, a lot of people talked about that watch being I don't know, the wood, I just don't understand the wood. That just doesn't make sense to me. I think it's, they were trying to be, maybe they must have thought it was neat or something, but to have the numbers go through the wood, and I'm like, that doesn't have anything to do with Back to the Future. It doesn't call back to anything in the Back to the Future. And because you have this wood as the central thing, and the fact that it doesn't fit in with the movies thematically or story-wise or anything, it's all I see now. All I see is the wood, so I don't see the stainless steel, I don't see the Nixie style, you know, numbering, lettering, any of that kind of stuff. All I see is the wood, and I'm like, why is the wood there? Wood doesn't make any sense to me. But, all's well that ends well. Uh, uh, Sadie, uh, our oldest daughter, decided, she announced that she loved the watch, because she does love the movies. She thought the watch was super cool, and so she has been gifted that watch, and that is now her watch. I will take the all the paperwork and everything else, and I'll, I'll box that and put that away. But Sadie's wearing it. She thinks it's awesome. She thinks it's totally cool. Well, that's about it. That's that's Friday. Um, I don't know, man. I hope that the these fires tamp down. At least it's not nighttime at almost 5 o'clock like it was yesterday, but... Anyway, if somebody comes up with an idea for why there's wood in the Back to the Future watch, please let us know. Other than that, you folks have a great weekend, and thank you again for watching. And uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll do an iron-on transfer. Okay, bye-bye.